going to continue talking about the Gibbs Graham equation I think for quite some time. Okay, I am going to talk about We had two equations. I had mu one minus mu one pure. binary systems actually the equation itself <coughs> I do not know if I wrote it in the final form this is it, yeah I wrote this <coughs> we re rewrote this to get solutions of this form where delta g is any function of composition such that of course f of 0 is equal to f of 1 equal to 0 because when x 1 is 0 or x 1 is 1 you have got the pure state you do not have a mixing process at all. So, this is automatically a condition only. Now, we were discussing the Van Laar equations or the Van Laar theory what Van Laar said we started with this. this is what I want but this is what I can do and luckily thermodynamics tells me if I go around this way I get the same answer if I do it this as I if I do it from A to B. So, this is pressure P <coughs> this is pre equal to 0 T equal to constant and then this is pure liquids x 1 x 2 this is mixture liquid mixture of composition x 1 this is gas mixture of composition x 1 this is pure gases. <coughs> we made some assumptions we talked about excess properties. So, you have delta g minus delta g ideal is equal to is defined as g excess and said we said u excess is equal to or the other way around. of this this is set to 0 this is an assumption I told you it is not a bad assumption in the case of molecules of similar size this is also set to 0 this is generally a good assumption when I say sound assumption I mean you can verify using experimental data that volume changes on mixing are generally very small there is no ideal change in volume there is no actual change in volume either. So, delta V minus delta V ideal is actually 0 both are 0. So, this is generally a very good assumption except in rare cases in fact you will be hard put to find counter examples where it is significant there are some cases this set to 0 I will say this is not in the same class as the thing not bad for mixtures of similar molecular sizes 
when I say similar you can go up to 5 times roughly it does not matter. One molecule can be 5 times as big as the other and still you would not have significant s delta s other than the ideal entropy change in mixing. So, so having said that he simply wanted to find u. So, he started with this equation du you get du is equal to C B D T plus he was calculating change in u at constant temperature in all the processes. So, to calculate delta u from one point to the other he said delta u was simply integral of T dou P by dou T minus T dV from P is equal to P to P is equal to 0. This is delta u for A B. Now, this is where the boss stepped in van der Waals, he said all fluids obey the van der Waals equation. <coughs> the van der Waals equation is P plus A by V squared into V minus B is equal to RT. Because the physical arguments for van der Waals are very simple, simply said there is a volume occupied by molecules B, P V is equal to RT was already known. He said the actual volume is the volume minus the volume occupied by the molecules which is B and that van der Waals already predicted that B would be of the order of the specific volume of the liquid because after condensation it says that is the space occupied by the molecules and the balance space is available as for a ideal gas because ideal gas consists of point particles plus free space and this is not point particles. So, he said this is he expected this to be of the order of V liquid and generally densities of liquids are constant. So, when he said V liquid he took it at the triple point, but he could have taken it almost at any condition. The argument here was that pressure is change of moment exchange of momentum with the walls, it is a rate of change of momentum. So, when a molecule collides and comes back you change take the change in momentum divide by the time between collisions and then you will get an estimate of the momentum exchange you can get the pressure. This is in an ideal gas. In actual gas he said that the forces are primarily attractive, the number of molecules striking the wall is proportional to the density which is proportional to the 1 by the specific volume. The number of molecules pulling these molecules away from the wall and therefore reducing the momentum is also proportional to the number density which is also proportional to 1 by V. So, effectively he said the effect of attractive forces between molecules is proportional to 1 by V squared depending on the molecule you have different A values different strengths. So, he argued that A by V squared is the reduction in pressure caused by attractive forces. So, if we had treated the system as an ideal gas the ideal gas would have actually exerted a pressure equal to P plus A by V squared that is this would have been absent in the ideal gas. So, this is effectively the ideal pressure this is effectively the ideal volume and P V is equal to RT. So, van der Waals said you have to use this equation and this equation because it has attractive forces will predict for you condensation, we will actually do that it can predict you go on compressing the gas be below its critical temperature it will condense at some point at some point thermodynamics will tell you what the chemical potential of the vapor is chemical potential of the liquid is and you can calculate this. In fact, one assignment I will give you is to prepare the van der Waals chart the HP chart for a van der Waals fluid. If you do that once then you know practically how the others are obtained. But let us look at this because if I do not have these attractive forces you cannot produce condensation. So, you would not get when I do the chart here you will get only this region for an ideal gas there will be no condensation at all. If you want condensation you have to introduce attractive forces this V minus B will still would not give you condensation 
in fact p into v minus b equal to rt is sometimes called a hard sphere uh, model but let me get back here i've got the van der waals equation has to be used so if i calculate p so you get p is equal to rt by v minus a by v squared so t <coughs> dou p by dou t is simply rt by v which assumes that the a is an absolute <coughs> constant it's not a function of temperature improvements on the van der waals fluid actually show that a is dependent on temperature and therefore you have to use it's rewritten in terms of another constant times a function of temperature it's the red lick kester equation there's some slight changes but there is a very successful equation of state called the red lick kwang equation of state not red lick kester in fact when i went as graduate student to us at that time berkeley had redlich teaching the course teaching thermodynamics apparently it started with the redlich kwang equation of state and ended with the redlich kwang equation of state he said there is no other fluid so everything was done for the redlich kwang equation of state so you get this so this difference is actually a by v squared t d do p by do t minus p is actually plus a by v squared so you get this implies that delta u for a van der waals fluid is actually a by v squared dv so i'll give you minus a by v if i switch the this thing you get a by v at p is equal to 0 v is infinity so you will simply get a by v it is i'm writing this from p is equal to 0 to p p with a minus sign and p is equal to p the volume is v that's given by this equation you have to solve the cubic and find the correct root but a by v so a has the interpretation of essentially the latent heat evaporation delta u is actually the internal energy change when this pure substance goes from liquid to vapor right so this is actually the it's the enthalpy of vaporization is the latent heat but enthalpy and internal energy change are approximately equal because p delta v is negligibly small so this has an estimate of the latent heat so a can be calculated as density times the latent heat this v is v liquid because you are talking of the at pressure p you started with the liquid and v liquid according to van der waals is b is the parameter b in his equations so that's approximately equal to a by b so he has got delta u ab is equal to u xs ab because delta u if this was an ideal gas delta u change is zero because u is a function only of t you are doing the whole process at constant temperature so delta u ab is the same as u xs because delta u ab minus delta u ideal would have been this delta u ideal is zero in fact the for the whole process delta u ideal is zero so this is equal to this and it's equal to a by b it's actually it's not a by b exactly it's x1 moles of 1 which you are separate which you are evaporating separately per mole it's a11 by b that equation is written per mole so this is delta u is the specific internal energy change per mole of for the pure substance i have to write x1 and x1 moles of 1 b1 is the parameter for pure one a11 is the parameter because it represents interaction between two molecules you have to write two subscripts on it plus of course x2 moles times a22 by b and then delta u bc 
is equal to u x s b c this is mixing of ideal gases there is no change in energy when you mix ideal gases to form a mixture there is no interaction energy to begin with so there is no change in interaction energy. and then delta u c d is equal to u x s c d instead of this you are now doing condensation so you will get a minus sign right the integral will go from p is equal to 0 to p is equal to p so you will get a minus sign you get minus a mix by b mix so i have g x s for the process is equal to u x s for the process this is a d this is equal to u x s for a b plus u x s for b c plus u x s for c d So you get G X S is equal to X1 A11 by B1 plus X2 A22 by B2 minus A mix by B mix. The concepts in this equation are basically valid but this particular final result is uh, restricted to the van der Waals fluid. So if you have a more complicated equation of state you can use that and do the same calculations. Not many people have done that and you can do that and get other expressions for GXS. Yeah. Because it represents attractive forces and van der Waals recognize that if you mix there will be an A12. A11 is between 1 and 1. A22 is characteristic of the pure fluid 2, it represents an interaction between 2 molecules. A12 is if you had 1, one molecule and 1, 2 molecule, the interaction between them. Of course, all these will be multiplied by Avogadro number because you are talking of per mole, whereas your interactions are actually between molecules. No, you can put RT by V minus B if I made that mistake. Even if you put V minus B, as long as B is constant and you differentiate with respect to T, it will disappear. If I wrote V, it is a mistake, it is V minus B. In fact, um, incidentally, when I am on this topic, let me say this. So, you get uh, this, this is P is equal to rt by v minus b minus a by v square so this is what he called p hard sphere and then this is p or delta p due to due to attraction due to attractive forces that's what van der waals argued much later now we have an exact molecular theory of hard sphere fluids you have a different expression for p hard sphere which it is different from the van der Waals expression and you can actually derive an exact theory for hard sphere fluids and you can verify this because now you can do computer experiments you can do Monte Carlo calculations I will just describe that briefly because a very interesting set of calculations so p hard sphere now we have an exact expression so you can rewrite this equation as p hard sphere exact plus the same thing minus a by v square this equation has been this is also it is called Longe Higgins Widom equation of state after three people who wrote it down uh, they borrowed the p hard sphere exact from molecular theory it is been fairly successful theory that is van der Waals has many limitations qualitatively it is always right but in terms of agreement with experiment has a large number of limitations 
in the longer Higgins Widom equation of state is much better than this. That means Van der Waals was able to essentially uh, quantify the effect of attractive forces quite well. The mistake he made was in the hard sphere estimate. Anyway, you cannot call it a mistake in 1870 that was well ahead of his times. So, so let me get back here. So, what it what this tells you is that if you have an equation of state, you will anyway have to have parameters that are functions of composition. Because when you write Van der Waals equation, you write P is equal to RT by V minus B minus A by V squared, it is written for a homogeneous fluid. So, A and B have to be functions of composition. So, what uh, Van der Waals suggested and uh, when Van der Waals suggests its law, at least at that time it was law, hard spheres. HS is hard spheres. If you take A mix, the probability of in a mixture, the probability of finding a 1 1 pair is proportional to x 1 squared. So, you get x 1 squared A 1 1, the probability of finding a 1 2 pair and a 2 1 pair, which are both characterized by an interaction 1 2 is 2 x 1 x 2 plus x 2 squared A 2 2. So, here he says assume that the mixture was a random mixture. <coughs> Even to date molecular models only ask what is the departure from randomness. So, you can get mixing rules that are slightly different from this. You must remember although I called this a theory basically you have one degree of freedom there is going to be always guessing at one point. What he does is he uses an equation of state and finally gets it in terms of these and you have to put in expressions for these. These are called mixing rules and till date they are all empirical in classical thermodynamics. You simply put in a mixing rule, derive results, compare with the experiment. If it agrees then you accept the mixing rule. There are hundreds of mixing rules, there is a whole paper on mixing rules in 1960s. I do not think a review has been written after that because there are not many new mixing rules. I mean you should realize that these coefficients of these coefficients are such that x 1 squared plus 2 x 1 x 2 plus x 2 squared is 1, it is always true all these equations will be of that form. Then there is one more a 1 2 see I can get a 1 1 and a 2 2 b 1 and b 2 by fitting data for pure substances that is I take this equation of state for pure 1 I write p is equal to r t by v minus b 1 minus a 1 1 by v squared. Then I collect a lot of experimental data on p v t and fit the data to the curve. So, I will get the best values of b 1 and a 1 1. One simple way of getting b 1 is simply to take the density at the triple point, the triple point is invariant. So, you can go to that triple point measure the density of the liquid and you will get the value of b that is one way of doing. Then you can fit a by v squared by taking the data it is one parameter fit is trivial. So, you get these. So, I can get a 1 1 and a 2 2 from experiment a 1 2 is the hypothetical fluid in which all the interactions of the are of the form 1 2 that you cannot get because in any mixture you will have 1 1 interactions 2 2 interactions and 1 2 interactions I cannot isolate 1 2 alone. So, this is invariably produced from experimental data on mixtures knowing the pure parameters pure substance parameters. The other way is to suggest what a 1 2 would be, it has to be a, a mean between 1 1 and 2 2 and we are not very imaginative, we only know the arithmetic mean and the geometric mean. So, you use one of them actually Van der Waals suggested the geometric mean, if you like I will write this as k times in view of what has happened afterwards. This k 1 2 is approximately 1, but if it if you put 0.98 and if you put 1 you will get a huge difference in calculated thermodynamic properties. So, subsequently Prausnitz and co-workers have actually determined k 1 2 for a very large number of mixtures in the in some limiting cases where the forces the dispersion forces are the dominant the many intermolecular forces and even now our knowledge of intermolecular forces is not complete. But uh, for pure dispersion forces you can show that this kind of result is exact. So, it is exact in a certain limit, but as far as Van der Waals was concerned 
this combining rule was completely empirical this is called com combining rule. So one way of getting excess free energies is through the equation of state approach this whole thing is called the equation of state approach because you have a fluid described by an equation of state the equation of state should describe both the gaseous state and the liquid state. Ideally that is true we still do not have a single equation of state that correctly describes both the liquid and the vapor. But qualitatively the van der Waals fluid does many many equations of state will predict a pro the correct qualitative shape but it is still difficult to get the exact thing. But every equation of state has parameters that are empirical which are composition dependent according to what are called the mixing rules these can be derived from theory to some extent in special cases in other cases you have to approximate them there is right now we do not have a way of deriving this from theory. I mean we have a limiting case limiting cases where we can derive this from theory but in all other cases we do not know the rules. So what we do is to use usually the geometric approximation is used with a constant in front empirical constant you fit that date fit that to the data. But if I write this as a11 a22 then a mix is clearly equal to x1 If I put that in there it is clearly x1 square root of a11 plus x2 square root of a22 whole square. So I can now write what g xs is this is x1 a11 by b1 minus I need a mix okay I will just expand this may as well get 1 by b1 x1 plus b2 x2 into b1 b2 this one will become this b1 suppose I should write b2 let me see if I can get the algebra correct okay this is b2 into b1 x1 plus b2 x2 into a11 into x1 that is one term plus b1 into b1 x1 plus b2 x2 into a22 into x2 minus b1 b2 into x1 squared a11 So you can see the cancellations now this b1 b2 x1 squared a11 this term will cancel with this term and similarly this term b1 b2 x2 the second term will cancel with this term. what I have left is g x s is equal to to 
there is an x1 x2 here x1 x2 here x1 x2 everywhere so I will pull out the x1 x2. then a11 b2 squared plus a22 b1 squared minus 2 b1 b2 square root of a11 a22 This is what x1, x2, into square root of a11 b2 minus square root of a22 b1, the whole square. What I am going to do is multiply this by b1, b2. And divide by b1 b2. So I already have a b1 b2 here. So it will become b1 squared b2 squared. If I take it in here, it will become b1 b2 inside the square sign. So this will become a11 by b1 minus a22 by b2 the whole square. And then of course I have the b1 x1 plus b2 x2. This is the expression that Van Laar finally got. See square root of A11 by B1 minus square root of A22 by B2 is a constant. So what he is saying is Gxs is equal to x1, x2 by B1, x1 plus B2, x2. Or if you take g x s by x 1 x 2 and take its reciprocal this is linear in x 1. So if you plot if you actually measure delta g and get g x s you have to subtract off j delta g ideal in plot it against x1 if you get a straight line then you know the Van Laar equation will fit this data very well. It was very important when I was a student the straight line business now it is not you guys use the computer just hit the damn thing on the head it will tell you whether it is a good fit or not it will tell you what the standard deviation is. Earlier we used to do this visually you have to go on plotting this data and show that it is a straight line. It still uh, graphically is a good you see, but there are some significant things that Van der Waal said and uh, which is why Van Laar also point, Van Laar pointed out and became therefore he was accepted very widely. I do not know have you done principle of corresponding states have you shown these constants you have done that a bit. So you can show that the constant A is proportional to P C V C squared and B is proportional to V C. So this quantity A by B square root of A by B is proportional to PC for a Van der Waals fluid is proportional to PC. So Van Laar said if the critical pressures are the same the fluids will mix ideally because excess free energy will be 0. See if A by B for 1 is equal to square root of A by B for 1 is equal to square root of A by B for 2 this will be true if critical pressures are equal. So he said all fluids with approximately the same critical pressure will mix ideally. In the limited data they had at that time showed that that was in fact true. So it was hailed at that time as a very successful theory of liquids. So this this is the final result in Van Laar's theory but nowadays we handle this much more easily. We do not do we do not go through equations of state we do not go through 
mixing rules and combining rules the equation of state approach still remains the same this is the method everywhere you can change things you can change the equation of state from van der Waals to any other complicated equation of state you like you can take a more modern <coughs> equation of state substitute it there you can change your mixing rules mixing rules simply have to show that in the limits they have to go to the pure component properties but b can be written as any combination that goes to b1 in the limit as x1 goes to 1 and b2 as x1 goes to 0 similarly for a and then you have to assume a combining rule for a12 if you do all that you will get a theory of mixtures and uh, people have done this repeatedly through this thing and simply the ones that survive are the ones that are that agree with experimental data for a large number of systems for each system you cannot have a model the easier way of doing the same thing is you recognize again mu1 minus mu1 pure is simply delta g plus x2 partial of delta g with respect to x1 so all i need is an expression for delta g what uh, vol said was what can delta g be in a binary system it has to be x1 x2 times some function of x1 and any function of x1 according to weierstrass can be approximated by a polynomial so he said just use a polynomial for example you write this as x1 x2 into a plus b x1 plus c x1 squared plus etc if you want very accurate data you have up to c x1 to the power n and so on you go on increasing n you want an accuracy you have to arrive at the in the scene at the right time when people already know the result but have not stated it then quickly state it then your name is in the books everywhere world did not do anything new people had already been using the polynomial approach simply wrote a paper I do not know 30s or 40s I do not remember when it is not an important paper but somehow he managed to get credit for it so everybody uses Wohl's expansions and when too many terms are required some wise fellow had the idea that instead of doing this you make x1 x2 by see this is delta g by x1 x2 is equal to f of x1 so if you write this as some other polynomial of x1 this is equal to a plus b a prime if you like plus b prime x1 in case this requires too many terms the reciprocal hopefully will require fewer terms now this equation here having a not equal all the other 0 a not equal to 0 I will take this one then names because of people who derived various expressions earlier a not equal to 0 that means all others are 0 it is called Porter's equations you get the same equa equation when a prime is not equal to 0 except a prime will be 1 by a then if a and b are not equal to 0 you get what is called margules it is called the two suffix equation it is called two suffix because margules wrote it as a12 he wrote these with subscripts a1 a2 and so on so it is called two suffix equation all of these had two suffixes to them it does not matter it is when two are the thing then you can similarly have a b c a b c d etc so you get various all these are called margules equations because he wrote them down when a prime and b prime are not equal to 0 you get one large equations the structure is the same because if you look at one large equations x1 x2 by this is b1 x1 plus b2 x2 so in this case they are called one large equations this would be you know, compare with one large x1 x2 by g is we will call this parameter alpha just call it alpha if you like alpha 1 2 so you will get 
a prime plus b prime x1 is equal to b1 x1 plus b2 x2 by b1 b2 alpha 1 2. So, what is this is b1 minus b2 into x1 plus b2. So, your a prime is simply b2 by b1 or 1 by b1 alpha 1 2 and b prime is the coefficient of x1 except according to Van Laar b1 b2 are actually volumes according to van der waals right so they are known from pure component properties so this b1 b2 the all these are known only constant that's unknown is alpha 1 2 whereas uh, in practice people treat a prime b prime as independent parameters and only if you treat it as independent parameters you get a good fit to the data if you try to use the original van laar equation with values for b1 b2 from experimental data you do not get a good fit this equation fitted all mixture data beautifully even now for alcohol water mixtures it is probably one of the best correlating equations. This works very well Porter's equations very well for like <laughs> if you have a is equal to 0 this one works very well for uh, simple mixtures where molecules are very similar. And then the second this thing works a little better if the molecular separation is larger a large number of studies earlier were funded by the petroleum industry because they are the ones who had these various hydrocarbons coming out of the distillation column and they were similar but they varied in molecular weight from very low to very high you could go all the way from methane the molecular weight of what about 15 16 all the way down to tar which could be C56 if you like you could talking of very huge molecular weight ranges and if you have these mixtures you could describe them by various Margulis equations up to a b c not equal to 0 have been used quite widely. So, this really is the summary the way you do this is simply show that you can get delta from delta g an arbitrary model for delta g you get get all the mu ones once you show that all you have to do is guess delta g there is no restriction on delta g in thermodynamics except that reasonable restrictions like it has to go to 0 when you go to the pure state it has to be a smooth function you do not go on putting step functions and say delta g jumps here jumps there it does not do that in experiment. So, you have to have a smooth function that is one and the easiest way to get a smooth function is get a polynomial or it is reciprocal. So, you do that the 